Anna Marvel here, and I just wanted to jump on here um, and share with you some notes, some thoughts that I have um, regarding some uh, reading and listening that I've been doing. So um, don't worry about grabbing a pen or anything. I just want you to listen for now. Uh, I will post the notes, a link to the notes that I've already typed up, um, so you can just kind of chill and, and listen. This is information that when I heard it, uh, I thought to myself, wow, where has this been? Um, it's practical, it's simple, but it's organized in a way that made so much sense to me. And since I've started sharing this information with my team, it's been a really, really uh, good response. So I wanted to go ahead, um, I wanted to go ahead and share this with you guys. So here we go. This is from a talk that I heard from Chris Brady. So it's not unique information. However, um, I am going to put my little uh, business spin on it for what it has meant for me. So what would you do if you could master the art and learn how to quit quitting? Uh, I think this is so important for life, for, for business, for relationships. Um, if we can learn how to um, factor in some of these tips and training into our lives, learn how to quit quitting. Um, it's, I think, amazing what can happen and what the response can be for moving us forward to be successful in what we're trying to do. So in order to learn the skill of how to quit quitting, first we need to talk about three types of quitting. Um, the first type would be the temper tantrum quit. This would be uh, an emotional, not thought out, that's it. I'm done. I quit. I'm over. Um, over it. Uh, say, for example, uh, a product changes or um, something's on back order and you have no control over that situation, but you're going to allow it to emotionally affect you to the point that you're just, you're done. I quit. Um, not a good thing at all. You probably will regret that decision later. Number two is a slow fade. And I really like um, this because most people would think, <clears throat> okay, I'm not consciously making an effort to quit. But this would be um, slowly backing off, slowly um, pulling away, slowly withdrawing from the resources, tools, tips, training, whatever it might be that would help move you forward. So as you miss that next meeting or say, I'm not going to get on this call because there's another call, this um, slow fade of baby step backwards, baby step backwards, um, really in essence is you quitting because if you're not making that effort to move forward and plug in and do what you need to do to grow the business, you are eventually going to um, be quitting. And then the just for now quit. Um, we are getting close to Thanksgiving and Christmas um, right now. And I think a lot of times people say, oh, I'm going to do that later. You know, after the holidays, I'm going to be ready to rock and roll. Um, after this, you know, after my kids graduate in a few months, um, I'll be able to give more time and commitment to this. So this, again, wouldn't necessarily be consciously quitting. They're not telling themselves that's it, I'm done. Um, but in them saying, I'm going to wait till the holidays are over. I'm going to wait for this. I'm going to wait for that. In saying that, essentially, they are already quitting. So those are three things that um, can kind of summarize how people quit. Um, 10 things that make you feel like quitting. I think this is so important because these 10 things, if you know they're coming and you know how to address them, you're not gonna be a quitter. You're gonna keep on pushing forward. So first thing would be, I just feel like I can't do it. Um, and a lot of this lends to what you're telling yourself, those um, beliefs that we already have about ourselves just based on how we were raised, the experiences that we've been exposed to, um, what our beliefs about ourselves are and what other people are telling us. Um, this is a really, really tough one and one that you need to tackle head on with um, positive affir affirmations, telling yourself, I am this, I will be this, um, thinking positively. You need to have a vision for where you want to go and you need to be able to have people pouring into you um, and encouraging you, supporting you, surrounding you with that network of people believing in you and helping you realize, I can do this. The other way to help address this feeling like you can't do it is to equip yourself. Um, read books, listen to tapes, give yourself the information, knowledge, and training that gives you the confidence to say, you know what, I really can do this. 
uh, second reason uh, you might feel like quitting. Say you've just started and you got a few people who joined the business with you, um, and then they say, you know what, that's it, I'm done, I quit. Now, just because your people quit, that doesn't mean you get to quit. Um, there will always be people who join you and decide, I'm out of here. But if you make that decision, that conscious decision to say, I'm not gonna quit, um, I like to point out that when you joined the business that you're in, um, you didn't have any people. You were starting out from the beginning. So why would somebody coming in and then quitting have any bearing on what you decide to do? You need to have that long-term vision, your goals, um, not affected by what your team members would do. Um, number three, I'm out of names. I've exhausted my network. Uh, I just can't do it anymore. Uh, this one is, is mildly humorous in that we have how many billions of people on this earth. Um, there will never be people that you run out of um, lists of people to talk to. Um, now, it might be that yes, you've exhausted your warm market. You know, all of your friends and family have heard the information, but that's where you get to start expanding and stepping out of your comfort zone. How can I meet new people? How can I be a friend to somebody new? Um, you know, joining community groups, joining joining chamber groups, joining um, BNI, referral groups. There's lots and lots of different ways. Get out and do an open holiday open house. You could do um, a vendor event, um, you know, any kind of expo or anything like that to kind of meet new people. There's tons and tons and tons of ways. So don't don't say that you're out of people because um, you can always expand your network. If you're always looking to meet a new person and be a friend to somebody, I'm sure that you will be successful in being able to grow your network. Uh, number four, I gave it my best shot. Um, isn't that interesting? Uh, mm -hmm. That's the Jim Rowan being channeled, uh, and this isn't that interesting. Um, you are not allowed to say you gave it your best shot, because if you're ready to throw in the towel after two days, two weeks, two months, that's not your best shot, and you can give it another shot. Uh, number five, I am not as far as I thought I would be by now. Um, this can be a tricky one, because a lot of times people do jump in, and they're excited and you know overzealous and they say bam I'm gonna be this in two months and this in six months and then reality sets in of oh wow um, it's not happening as fast uh, <coughs> as I had hoped <clears throat> well guess what you can um, review and adjust and it it is shifting your time frame is gonna be better than you just throwing in the towel <coughs> excuse me I've got tickle in my throat <clears throat> I've had this cold and I was hoping I was past it enough to be able to talk for a long time. Um, so don't let the um, need to readjust your long-term goal or the need to say, okay, I'm not where I thought I would be. Don't let that discourage you to say, okay, I'm just going to quit. <clears throat> don't give up on your dreams just because it's taken a little bit longer. You're still going to be on a much better path um, than you know, say corporate nine to five, working 45, 50 years of your life um, to get where you're going. If you found this wonderful thing called network marketing. Um, number seven, <clears throat> it's harder than I thought. Now, I do have to tell you that this can be a really big one because a lot of people say, you know what, I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna share with, you know, my friends and family, and I'm gonna have two rock stars that join me in my first week, and I'm just gonna ride them to the top. Um, they have a misconception maybe about the hard work that it truly does take to um, have success. And I could read you um, quote after quote after quote about um, hard work and being successful and um, it's gonna take some work. And a lot of, some people, yes, you have that, you know, you're digging for gold bricks, you're looking for people, and yes, you're gonna find somebody who uh, it's a, a great uh, independent, self-motivated, you know, quick starter, you're going to find those people and that's awesome. But ultimately, I want you to think about um, striving for excellence and what it's going to take to be successful um, and not settling for that um, mediocre, oh, well, I was just hoping that I was going to have other people who could do the work for me. So, um, Success is hard. It does require, and I like to say, network marketing is called network marketing because it takes work, but boy, is it rewarding. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Okay, number eight, somebody made fun of me. Oh, yeah, somebody made fun of me. This one, I like to point out that 
Um, I happen to be married to the person who made fun of me for well over a year. Oh, you're doing that darn network marketing thing. Oh, you're doing that pyramid scheme. Oh, it's not going to work. Oh, you're not going to be good at it. Um, I had to listen to that daily. And that could have been an obstacle that I let um, allow me to quit. And I would not have reached where I have today had I let that person making fun of me, i.e. my husband, um, get to me. I really had to counterbalance that with what I was um, listening to, the the people I was surrounding myself with, um, getting that belief and that vision for I can do this, I want to do this, I will do this. So it might be that you join and you start sharing with people and you have those people who reject you and make fun of you and pick on you and oh it's that pink drink you know look at the you know you've joined some crazy scheme you know um, that really can derail a lot of people and I have found that when rubber meets the road that is a lot of times where most people quit because um, a lot of us are people pleasers I am a classic people pleaser I want everybody around me to like me and like my choices and like what I'm doing and that can set you up for a lot of disappointment and hurt um, so if you have decided this is what I'm gonna do um, building your belief increasing that vision for I can do this I will do this that will help you get past and um, you can as my husband now says well we can uh, laugh to the bank, but it's it's interesting that my biggest skeptic and critic in my life was my husband and pu Pushing through that now, of course, he's had to apologize um, and the blessings that were living out because of uh, Me being able to push through that uh, I can't even imagine where we would be if I had quit and let him get to me um, The next one would be number nine somebody hurt my feelings It's a little bit different than somebody made fun of me because in a business that's surrounded with people, um, you're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to get let down. We're all human. Nobody's perfect. A lot of times, little things over and over again, um, little disappointments and things that people can do to hurt our feelings, we can allow that to build up and cause us to be holding a grudge or just say, okay, that's it. I'm done. Do not lose sight of your dream and do not lose sight of the bigger purpose and vision uh, just because there's people involved and a lot of times people can be lacking in the people skills needed to help us all get along. Um, it's a learning thing, definitely, how to get along with people. So don't let that stop you. Um, num number 10, you ready for this one? Allowing negativity to create doubts and allowing those doubts to finally uh, hand you the decision to say, I'm going to quit. Um, we don't want you to do that. Definitely not. Um, but listening to negativity over and over again, and not doing anything to um, create a positive balance to overcome that negativity. Sometimes if that's what you think about and dwell on, that negativity uh, will definitely lead to doubts and those doubts will lead to fears and those fears will lead you to a decision to quit. So I think st statistically they've said that for every negative thing you hear are exposed to you need three positives just to bring it back to kind of a neutral um, five positives to a negative will keep you moving forward in uh, a positive way so you need to do whatever you can to make sure that the positivity coming into your life overshadows outweighs balances out um, blows past the negativity that you might experience now some people might not have a, a, a overall negative influence in their life and that's wonderful wouldn't that be great if we could all have supportive loving positive networks that would be amazing it's not like that in a lot of cases so don't let the negativity create doubts and don't let those doubts lead to fear that that leads you to a decision to give up um, I love 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 these two quotes <clears throat> you have to listen to them carefully and we'll let them sink in for a minute adversity is the canvas on which you will paint your greatness. Nothing comes easy in life and certainly things that are rewarding that will get you to an amazing end result. There, it's gonna, You're going to have adversity. You're going to have obstacles. Adversity is the canvas on which you will paint your greatness. And I can't take credit for these quotes. This is all Chris Brady. Uh, the next one would be obstacles are the seasonings that make victories sweet so when you're met with an obstacle and you figure out a way to go around it when you put on those work boots and figure out how to go over it 
and come out to the other side, that's going to be the sweetness of victory that you're going to be able to say, I made it through that. I made it past that. I made it over that. I made it around that. And now look where I am. Personal management and learning mental mastery is key. So remember this whole topic is how to quit quitting. What we're going to do to be able to help quit quit quitting on things important that are important in life. So there's three phases to learn this mental mastery for how to keep on moving forward to be successful. The first is the ignorance phase. The ignorance phase is, you know, you've heard that saying ignorance is bliss. This would be the honeymoon period. This would be you diving in, jumping, you know, feet first. I'm ready to do this. Let's go. Excited, you know, shiny new object. Uh, nothing can stop you. Life is you know, never been better. And that's, you know, day one after you've joined um, your company. Uh, you're excited, you're motivated, you're ready to rock and roll. And then what happens? You share with your first person and they tell you no. You're like, oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, it, the ignorance phase can be short or long depending on how how much you throw yourself out there and how, how much you start introducing your opportunity to people. That's going to bring you into the immersion phase. So step two of this um, mastering your your personal management of dealing with all this would be the immersion phase this is the phase where you the rubber meets the road it, you realize wow this is going to take some work wow this is possibly overwhelming wow how am I supposed to handle the reality of what I want to do to reach my goals and be successful uh, and a lot of people quit when they their perception of it's harder than I thought so this immersion phase can be six months, it can be, you know, years, depending on how well you handle working through your set of odds, you know, increasing your law of averages and working through your numbers, figuring out, okay, uh, what is it going to take to get me through this, around those obstacles, through the, the struggles, and figure out what work do I need to do to be successful. Uh, in the immersion phase, the most important thing for you to to do is establish your why. I want you to write it down. I want you to post it. If you do not have a strong enough belief in a why am I doing this, you will quit. If you don't have this long-term vision of striving for excellence, wanting something big, wanting this to be something amazing for you, for your family, um, for future generations, for it to be a legacy, for what you can accomplish through that. Um, if you stay in touch with what is the dream, what is my vision, what is my why, that is going to keep pushing you through the immersion phase to get to the next phase, which is intelligence. The intelligence phase is I've reached my goal, I've achieved my dreams, and I'm living the life that I had hoped. Uh, so those are really, really important. Now, some things to remember. If you get to the immersion phase, phase and quit because it gets hard. Quitting puts you right back into the ignorance phase of something new. So if you're looking for something to be easier, faster, quicker, better, when you meet that brick wall, instead of figuring out how to climb over that brick wall, if you quit, you're going to, wherever you start over again, you're going to be starting back in that ignorance is bliss and you're going to get to the same brick wall in life. Uh, and a lot of people become habitual quitters when they get to a point where they're not willing to do the work that it's going to take to help them learn something and move forward and get past that obstacle. They just want to quit and start over somewhere else so that they, they're hoping it will be easier the next place they get to. Uh, doesn't happen that way. Quitting is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Uh, and we all need to be able to learn how to work through and troubleshoot those problems and issues uh, that will help us get through that. Quitting starts a pattern that's hard to stop. You need to make sure that you realize it's about you. You know, uh, I think it's Jordan Adler I read. Uh, did nine network marketing companies in 10 years and just jumped from one to the next to the next to the next until he realized, wow, I should probably look at myself. There might be some personal growth and development and some, some help that I can get that will help me figure out what I'm doing wrong or why this isn't working and help me move forward to be successful in a company. Um, address the issue of you. Remember that when you quit, you've lost that time. Whatever work you did to get through that immersion phase and then quit, um, that's time lost. Now you can take it as a learning experience for, okay, I'm going to take something, uh, 
take something from this and apply it to when I start over again, but that's, that's not time that you can get back. Um, so sometimes pushing forward, uh, you know, it's like that story of the guy who swam, he's going to swim across the lake. He only swam, he swam halfway and then he decided it was too hard and came back. Well, how ridiculous is that? He swam the same distance back to the beginning as he would have to keep moving forward and get to the other side. 10 practical steps, and this is where we're going to kind of get down to the nitty gritty of 10 practical steps to help you quit quitting. Uh, the first one, and like I said, guys, I'm going to post a link to my notes. I've got all these notes typed out for you. Um, so I will post the link when I get this up to uh, YouTube so that you guys can just print that out and use, use it as you would like to. Uh, don't ever show your last plan. Now, as this applies to network marketing, um, it would be always having another lunch scheduled, another coffee date scheduled, another conference call scheduled, another appointment booked, another uh, event to go to to meet new people and network. Don't ever have said, okay, I don't need to do that anymore. You know, I'm, I've arrived, I've, I've reached it. When you quit booking your calendar for new ways to meet people and share with people and interact with people, you have started quitting. Um, just a little side note, if my husband's watching, uh, in relationships, don't ever book your last date night. Don't ever book that, you know, not book that time to connect. Uh, cause time is a great way to make sure that something is going to be successful, whether you're devoting time and business hours to your business or whether you're investing time into somebody in a relationship. <clears throat> Number two, when you're feeling down and discouraged, you have that low, you know, low tank of, I don't think I can do this when, when the rejection, you know, has, has gotten to you. Uh, you need to move por forward immediately in a positive way. You need to call your upline. You need to call a best friend. You need to do something positive. You know, get on a conference call and listen to some amazing testimonies of what the company and uh, opportunity and products are doing for people. If you're feeling down and discouraged, you immediately need to do something to counteract that so that you can move forward and feeling better about things. Uh, the third thing, <clears throat> listen to audios. And if it were me, this would be number one. This is like essential without fail. What has been the most helpful for me is my personal growth and development time in listening to audios. You can put audio books on your phone, plug in your ear pods, you know, put your little ear things in. When I was drying my hair this morning, I was listening to 25 ways to win with people with John Maxwell. Even if it's only five minutes, you will give yourself one little, uh, something to hold on to for that day to keep you f moving forward to help you get through the uh negativity and discouragement or to give you the tools to help you equip yourself for what do i need to do what's going to be um, best for me to move forward um sarah robbins how to rock your network marketing um well hers is the rockstar recruiting school her book is how to rock your network marketing business she's got a new master class um with for more leadership stuff um mastermind the mastermind audios i will never stop talking about because those have seriously been life-changing for me and i have you know six sets in my car you know or six discs in my car some more in my van some more everywhere i go i listen in that the listening to the audios the plugging in it really 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 will help to fill your brain with positive um motivating uh amazing information that's going to help you move forward even just one more day give you something to hold on to to say okay i'm going to try for one more day Number four, refresh your dream. Why is it you are doing this? Now, there's some great perks to network marketing and why we can do this. You know, some people need a bigger house. You'd like to drive the free car. And I will tell you, uh, my Lexus GX460 is amazing. I love it. But that's only going to get me so far. Uh, having that vision of, I want to be home with my boys. I want to be able to be the kind of mom who can invest time and energy into them and be available for them when they need that. That why motivates me. It drives me to try a little bit harder, to make one more phone call, to do one more conference call with my team. That keeps me moving forward because I know long term uh, I'm going to be able to stay at home with my kids. and. Um, live the life of my dreams. Now, take it a step further. Through this opportunity, we have been blessed to be able to contribute to opening up an orphanage for 25 kids in India. Uh, that's, you know, monthly something now that we contribute to. We are 
helping change the world one person at a time. And so when you get down and discouraged and feel like, you know what, I think I'm, I think I'm going to quit. I don't think this is for me. Uh, thinking back to what is it that I'm trying to accomplish? What is the bigger value and the bigger, uh, reason behind this refresh refreshing that dream i will tell you guys dream boards work vision boards work now if you want to just jump on pinterest and make um, a virtual one or you know make a good old poster board get a cork board you know cut out pictures out of a magazine having that visual does amazing things being able to look at it and say this is why i'm doing it and keep it at the front of your mind uh it's absolutely it works it works <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Number five, envision your future. If you do not have that long-term vision for where you want to go and where you are going, uh, you're going to quit. I like to give the example. Uh, when I was an Emerald ambassador in our company, um, I wanted Sapphire really bad and it was just taking longer than I had hoped and thought. And a lot of people were doing it quicker than I was. Um, I envisioned myself I did you know that visualization of okay at our next convention I want to be sapphire and I even went out and I bought a blue dress which I can post a picture of uh, I bought a blue dress and I visioned my envisioned myself on that stage as a sapphire wearing that sapphire blue dress and guess what when the next convention rolled around, I was a Sapphire ambassador and I wore that dress and I was able to say, I did it, I reached my goal. Thinking about that and having that um, tangible really, really does help. So go out and make your vision board, your dream board. Um, don't fall for the false illusion of unknown alternatives. And this would be that new shiny object that distracts you and gets you to jump over to something. And it really could be a false illusion of something that you thought, dreamed, hoped would be easier, better, um, the next great thing. And it turns out to truly have been a false illusion. And that would be a really bad place for you to have to start over uh, square one and realize that that was something that you should not have done. Uh, eight, I love, 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 love this one. Okay, you ready? This is a big one. Focus only on what you can control. How many times do we want to try to change other people, try to change circumstances, try to have a little hissy fit and blame something that we have no control over? If you focus on that, imagine yourself driving a car. Okay, if I'm looking off to the right at something that's off the road, am I going to start veering over to the right? Absolutely, because we follow in the direction that we focus, where we look. So what are you focused on? You need to have that goal, that vision, that belief, that dream, and focus on that. And things that you can't change, don't let that derail you. Don't let that distract you. Uh, I like to use the example. Uh, right now, our catalogs are on back order. They're being updated, and we're getting ready you know, for the holidays, and nobody has their catalogs. Uh, a lot of people are letting that derail them and frustrate them. Well, guess what? We don't have any control over that. And, and detracting our focus away on something that we um, are doing that we can't have any control over, it's just spinning our wheels. It's just wasting energy that is better focused on doing something about what we can do. So just remember to pick up and do something about how can I change myself? What activities can I do to create um, results for me where I am right now uh, and what can I do to help move myself forward and don't let any of those distractions help you lose focus of what your goal is. Uh, number nine, know how to repair yourself. When you're feeling down, when you're feeling discouraged, when you've uh, entertained the thought of, okay, I think I'm going to quit, that is when you need to know what is it going to take for me to feel better? What is it going to take for me to say, okay, I can do this? Uh, and it's going to be different for everybody. You know, somebody might say, I'm going to go get a pedicure and have a day at the spa, just kind of unwind and start over. Uh, some people would say, okay, I'm going to go to a meeting. I need to be around other like-minded people who are going to help me, you know, get, get up and going again. It's going to be different for everybody. Um, so you need to figure out what it is for you. Uh, if we go back to Gary Chapman and the love languages, uh, what fills your love tank? 
you know, he talks about, you know, is it words of affirmation? Is it personal t physical touch? Uh, is it gifts? What is it that's going to make you feel refreshed, revitalized, and ready for a new day to keep moving forward in your business? So try to think about that. Figure out what it is. Do I need to go invite a friend for coffee? You know, do I need to go see a movie? Do I need to actually do some income producing activities in my business so I can have some positive that I feel good about? It's going to be different for everybody. And number 10, when you need repair, when you're feeling down and discouraged, when you feel like, okay, that's it, I quit, postpone making all decisions. Because it might be in that a moment of emotion, we go back to the three kinds of quitters, it might be that, that's it, I quit, I'm done, emotional temper tantrum, and that might be that short-term, whoops, um, that didn't take care of you know something that was going on and and you might regret it later You might have to live out the consequences of making that hasty decision when you're feeling down and out um, so don't make any Decisions when you're feeling that way you need to plug in refresh your dream Remember why you're doing it get some support uh, surround yourself with people who are cheerleaders. I love partnering off team members who can be cheerleaders for each other that accountability and also that um, feeling of I have somebody cheering for me is amazing. Uh, I will tell you I have an amazing family. Uh, now my husband has seen the air of his ways and is you know a very amazing supporter and cheerleader for me in moving forward and being successful. Uh, my parents, my mom and dad are my number one cheerleaders. Uh, it's absolutely amazing to know that they think the world of me and and motivate me and inspire me to keep dreaming bigger and being successful in doing that. Uh, so surround yourself. If you look at your network and you've got four or five, six, ten people who are telling you you can't and who are not helping you um, have a positive, wonderful outlook on life, it might be time to go start looking for some new networks so that you can have those cheerleaders, you can have those people that surround you and help you to feel good about yourself and positive and all that. So keep yourself in the game. Don't quit. Let your story be written and definitely uh, quit quitting because you can live the life of your dreams. You can achieve big things. Is it Napoleon Hill that says if your uh, what your mind can conceive and what you believe you will achieve something like that um, and it's true so I hope that for all of you thank you so much for tuning in and watching uh, I'm sorry it was a little bit lengthy but I really really felt like when I read these notes and when I heard this talk uh, it was just enlightening to me and I wanted to share this with all of you so I'd love for you to connect with me on Facebook. You can find me, um, just Sarah J. Marvel. Or if you can't find me there, Sarah's Plexus Slim on Facebook. Um, we can chat. Uh, I'd love to know what you are thinking. And if you are thinking about quitting, um, hopefully you can go back and look through and listen um, and decide what do I want? Why do I want it? How am I going to get there? I'm going to put the work and effort in and hopefully be successful in achieving my dreams. So y'all have an awesome day.